Today I'm going to show you how to create a digital quilt pattern for your robotics long arm machine called the orange peel. Now the orange peel, you can design this pattern in multiple different versions. I'm going to go ahead and go with the easiest version today just because we're going to be learning the program and it's kind of a lot to take in. If I were to design this on a larger scale with multiple repeats already within the pattern. So we're just going to do the most simplest version out there which is just half of an orange peel which then as an example if I were to take this simple one copy paste it. So if I were to take this and then copy it repeating it across and let's go ahead and do it one more time copy so on my long arm machine I would be repeating it across the next row over you would just take the same thing and you can of course have it like so that would create another really cool pattern or you can go ahead and drop it down and rotate it or offset it, excuse me, 50% and you'll then start seeing the orange peel shape appear. Now that is one version and like I said you can create this at a much larger repeatable scale but we're going to go with the easiest one for now. So let me go ahead and delete that and we'll do the simple version which is here on the bottom left and then we'll do a couple creative versions as well just to you get the hang of it. Now the programs I am using is Adobe Illustrator, but no matter what, you will need this program called Art & Stitch. Now Art & Stitch, fair warning, is pretty expensive, but if you are lucky like me, some long arm machine brands do offer Art & Stitch bundled in with the package deal, and some of them don't. So just fair warning. Now I purchased a Bernina Q24 with the robotics, and Art and Stitch did come with it. Now why you need Art and Stitch is because when you go to file and save or save as whichever it will save it in all of the quilt formats available. So if you want to open a business per se and sell your digital long arm quilt patterns you're gonna want this program and it's going to be a great investment. Now you can purely only design in Art and Stitch, but because I come from a graphics design background and I have worked in the Adobe Suite programs for many, many, many years, you'll kind of not like Art and Stitch with designing, especially if you're someone like me. So if you are very familiar with Adobe Illustrator, it's going to be a whole lot easier to design ideas. Second, why I recommend it, even if you are not familiar with the Adobe Illustrator program, you can of course go to YouTube and search for millions, if not billions of tutorials on how to use Adobe Illustrator, where if you were to search Art & Stitch, there's pretty much not really anything out there. So I highly recommend the Adobe Illustrator, especially if you want to design patterns. Let's go ahead and get started. I know I can ramble off, but every time when I talk about this, a lot of people ask questions of why do I use tube programs? And that's the reason why. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started. And we are going to create this first simple version. Now, here are a couple rules you need to always consider. And that is, Wherever you start, you need to be on the same plane or the same line wherever you end. And that makes this design repeatable because when you save the file to whatever your format is and upload it to your longer machine, wherever this point is, it needs to be directly on the other side. So that way when it repeats, they will connect. So that is one thing you need to remember. Second, it always needs to be a continuous line. So as another example, if I were to start drawing lines and get a little crazy and I'm like, oh, let's fix it. So then you go and you start fixing your lines like I want that there. And then you start drawing again and going off and you're like, OK, I'm done but let's say this line is down here. It looks like one continuous line, 
but it technically isn't. And one good way to tell is if you click on one side, only this side is technically highlighted blue, where if I click on this side, only that one is highlighted blue. So we need to connect it in this scenario, which is very easy if you accidentally do that. And how to do that is on your tool board, make sure you're on the direct selection tool. Then you're going to highlight, which is just drag and click. And now this point is a solid blue where the rest are basically not solid. It kind of has like a blue outline. Now mine is blue. Yours could be green, teal, red. It does come in other colors, but mine's blue. And you can right click on your mouse and then hit join. So then if I were to click off of this and then click it again, it is one solid line. Now remember, I already ignored one rule, and that is wherever we stopped, we need to be on the same plane or the same line wherever we ended. So this one isn't, it's down here. So this technically would never be a repeatable pattern. So there are a couple things you need to always consider. So let's go ahead and delete that, and let's start making the orange peel. Now I already have my grid. If yours does not have the grid open, to get that, you're going to go to File, or View, here at the top, excuse me, and then you're going to scroll down and hit Show Grid. So that's what it would look like if you do not have a grid. So I'm going to click it to Show Grid, and now we have our grid. Second, I highly recommend you have your rulers open. And to get that, right-click on the mouse, and it will say show rulers so if I hide them now it says show rulers so I'm going to click on that and the rulers appeared now as you can see my white canvas is technically eight and a half by eleven here at the bottom you can open up a new file in whatever size you like currently we are going to use this grid to design it but the beauty of this is say I do not want one inch orange peels. What you can do is then grab the corners and drag it up. So now that would technically be a two inch orange peel or one peel and it's two inches because we have our rulers out. Now if your rulers are not in inches, to change that is you click on the ruler with your mouse but right click and then all of this will pop up and you can go ahead and click inches. Now if you like to work with centimeters or whichever, if you want to work in points, go ahead. As you can see I already changed it so if I click it again that's in feet. Let's go ahead and go back to inches and now it's in inches. So right now I'm going to design on a one inch square because I have a grid that's very easily for that. Now one last thing before we start, you're going to go to view and you're going to scroll down and you're going to hit snap to grid. This is going to make your life so much easier. So make sure snap to grid is on. Okay, now we're actually officially going to get started and we are going to do this first one right here. So what I'm going to show you is we are going to, as an example, start here and we are going to draw a half circle. We're going to want to come up and then we're going to have to retrace that back around. And then we're going to repeat that on the other side. We're going to go up, half circle, and then back around because we're going to end on that same plane. So once again, the shape we are going to be creating, now this is horrible looking, but don't worry, we are going to make it perfect. We are going to do a half circle, half circle, retrace over it, and then we're going to do the other side, half circle, half circle, then retrace over it, ending in the same plane field. Okay. So let's go ahead and draw it perfectly now. We are going to go to the pen tool. You're going to click on the pen tool 
and because we are snapping to the grid, you're going to snap it on one of the grid lines. Apparently I picked the three inch line, but as for right now, it doesn't matter. I just wanted to be a little bit centered on my board. So we are going to go one inch across and create a perfect 45 degree line. Now this is easy to tell because I have the grid and I know this is a one inch square and if I go directly across it's going to be 45 degrees. But another way to tell is you can go down eight because there's eight squares within this square. Whoops, accidentally clicked. You can go down eight and to the right eight okay now those are numbers that you'll need to kind of remember to yourself so you'll go down and across eight and you are going to click and hold and drag with your mouse eight counts now this bar that is coming out you're going to hold it for eight so you're going to go one two three four five six seven eight once you have eight Go ahead and let go. Now you have this half circle. Now with your pen tool, it is technically connected and it's not in the direction we want to go. If we were to go, we want to go back and curve up and that is not a pleasant shape. So how to get rid of that is we're going to click on this solid blue square Remember, yours can be a different color. And now it's a straight line. And this is what we want. Second, we're going to create the other half of the orange peel. And to do that, we're going to go up eight and across eight to the left. But if you highlight over, we get this circle that appears. And we do not want that because if I were to click and hold for eight, it does complete the shape. But this point right here is now closed off. And remember, we need a start point so that way when our end point ends, it can continue on. And now we just closed off that shape. So now we do not have a start or an end point technically. So this is why we do not want to do that. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So I'm going to undo that because we don't want that. I'm going to get my pin tool again, connect it. So now it's connected. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up eight to the right eight. We obviously cannot click there. So let's go over one more. And we are going to click and drag for eight. So let's go and recount one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let go. Just like so. Now, I am a fan of create your point and then fix it and then go back and fix it again. And draw, fix, draw, fix. We're going to be going back and forth. So in order to fix that, because that point technically is not where it needs to be, we're going to hit the direct selection tool, click that, click off of your design, and then we're going to click only that point. And that point will be a solid color. The rest will be white. And using your arrows, or you can just click and drag, you can move it over. And I like to finagle it, just give it a little shake or use your arrows to go up, down, left, right, till it's on the point that we need. Now here's the trick. Because we need to come back and trace over this bottom line to be able to complete our other half of the orange peel, if I were to click off of this, then go to my pen tool, how do I know which point I'm going to grab? So what I recommend before we connect them is find the point that started the bottom and just shimmy it over. It can, you can put it way over. I just put it one square over 
and we're just getting it out of the way because we drew the top line and now we want to come back down. So right now we just shift it out of the way. We're going to go back to our pen tool and actually let's go ahead and deselect. Then we're going to go to the pen tool and we want to continue from this point. So we're going to go ahead and click it to attach and we need to come back down like the very, very beginning. So we'll go ahead and go down eight and across eight. And that technically lands us at this point. And if I were to click that because it has that negative line, it will erase it. So we do not want to do that. So we're going to go down and across. And because I can't click on it, let's just go over one just to get it out of the way. Now we're going to click and hold for eight. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and let go. Now let's go ahead and fix everything. So we're going to hit our direct selection tool and we need to put this point back over at the start because that's our start point. Shimmy it over. And now it's perfect. This point right here, we want it right there. But once again, if I were to shove it over and then go to my pen tool, how do I know which point am I going to select since there's technically two points? So what I'm going to do is take the point I don't want, which is technically where it needs to be. We are going to move that over and out of the way. So that way this point can be where it needs to be for right now. And once again, we will be drawing, correcting, drawing, correcting in this scenario. So now that that point is perfectly where it needs to be and this top point is out of the way for now, we are going to go to the pen tool and we are going to connect by clicking. And now we need to go up at a diagonal at a 45 degree angle. So we're gonna go across eight and then up eight. And then you're going to click hold for eight. And now it's perfect. It's a perfect half circle. So let's go ahead and go back to our direct selection tool because we need to put this point right there in the beginning. Now here we are at this point. You could curve and go down, but we need to end up right here. So instead, let's move these points out of the way, just shimmy them over. And actually this one needs to go down because if I were to leave it here as an example and connect, as you can see, the point now has a plus and that's because there's a line in the way. So we need to make sure the line is out of the way. So that's why I'm gonna move that point down. And this is also why I say work on a grit because this is really going to help you out. So let's go ahead and get the pen tool. We are going to connect the point. So now we have a line attached to it and we want to go to the left eight, down eight, click hold for eight and there we go. Now you could move everything back but we need to end right up here at the top in order to make this a repeatable pattern, which means we need to create this half circle again, but this point is now in the way. So before we continue, I'm gonna hit the direct selection tool. We're gonna to grab this point and we are going to shimmy it down below. We can go ahead and cross points, that's fine. So we can hit the pin tool. We're gonna connect where we left off go across to the right eight to the top eight click hold and drag for eight and let go and now we are technically done with the line but we just need to put everything back in place so we're going to hit that direct selection tool this point is perfect so let's go ahead and move this point which we need to move it over to the right and then down one this point is off, so we need to move it to the right and up. There we go. Now this point needs to be up here. So we're gonna click that one. 
move it over and up and now our pattern is done now that was a little complicated which the orange peel is a little bit of a complicated design to digitize I do have easier designs to start which we have like clamshells and I'll have a link for all those videos down below but here is how you do the orange peel and technically now you are done so you could just go ahead and save this file as a illustrated file and doing that you can go to file save as and here I've created a folder called orange peel and in the file name I'm going to name it orange peel and you're going to save it as an Adobe Illustrator file and you would just hit save and here you just keep everything the same and you'll hit OK and you are done now do keep in mind though I am drawing multiple designs so I have these other designs here at the bottom in order to save this as a single design it needs to be all by itself so what you can do is go to file new just get a new file open you can of course if you want show your rulers show the grid if you prefer and what you can do is select copy go over paste and now that file is by itself and now you would then save this as an orange peel design because you just need only one design per save file okay so keep that in mind now here is also where you can go ahead and highlight it and if you do not want an one inch orange peel you can go ahead and select all of it and use these little corner tabs and draw and stretch it to however what size you want now this is kind of flexible now on your keyboard you can hit the shift button and now it scales it to the proper size equally so here in this scenario would be a two inch orange peel or you can stretch it out a little bit larger and be a three inch and you can save it to whatever size you'd like just like that and then here in this scenario I would be going file save as and then I would do probably orange peel and then save it as three inch just like that and then hit save so then I know that that size is a three inch but let's go ahead and go back before we move to Adobe Illustrator real quick because I'm going to show you how to do these other bottom two designs now let me delete that one let's go ahead and do this one right here because this is technically the next easiest design and just to show you what process we are going to take we're gonna once again create our half circle then we're gonna come up and instead of retracing over what we're going to do is create the half circle half circle come straight down at a 45 degree angle half circle half circle then straight across because we need to end on the same plane there we go and delete now let's go ahead and make it perfect and let's zoom in okay so now we're gonna hit our pin tool and once again I like to select anywhere in the middle and it looks like we've landed on the 3 inch and the 4 inch and like I said this does not matter I just prefer to draw in the center so we're gonna go ahead and click and we're gonna go down 8 across 8 because we want a perfect 45 degree line where we can go ahead and click and hold and drag for 8 now I'm dragging this way because if I were to go this way it looks funny if I were to go this way it looks funny and this is the shape we want to create so I went across 8 now we want to come back up and remember the blue line is kinda not the shape that we want so what we're going to do is click on it 
and then we're going to go up. Now remember, we want to come to this point, and we kind of can't because it's in the way. So we can go ahead and click the Direct Selection tool, grab just this point, and shimmy it off to the side. Just move it out of the way for now. And then we're going to go back to click on this point, click it to attach our pin line. We're going to come up 8, across 8, click, and hold for 8, just like so. And then I want to do a straight 45 degree line. So right now it's a curve. So we're going to re-click it and now we can do a 45 degree line. Now what's simple about 45 degree lines is technically, once again, if I click this, it will erase everything. But because it's a 45 degree line, we could actually click either right there or we can go past it and click over to that side. As an example, because it's a straight line, it's easier to manipulate. But what we're going to do is go to the direct selection tool. This side is done, so we can go ahead and take this line and move it back to where it needs to be. Now we want to create the other half orange peel shape. And we need to create this point right here, but these points are all in the way. So let's go ahead and take those and shimmy them out of the way. And then we're going to take this point, which was from our 45 degree line, and move it where it needs to be. Then let's go ahead and continue. So go ahead and hit the pin tool, click to attach it. And now we're going to do the curve first. So over 8, up 8, click, drag for 8, and we need to go ahead and come back down over here. So 1, the line is not what it needs to look like, so we're going to re-click that to turn it into a straight line. And we're going to hit our direct selection tool because we need to get this point out of the way. So let's go ahead and shimmy it out of the way. Go ahead and go back to your pin tool. We can click this, go across and down 8, hold and click for 8, and once again we want to go a diagonal straight line, so we're going to click that, now it's a straight line, and the first one I did, I went past it, so I'll go, I'll stop short of it just to show you that either way it doesn't matter, and now we're going to go back to the direct selection tool, and move the points where they need to be on the grid. So we're going to place that one over, move that one up, and then we're going to take this point, and it needs to end right here because that's where we started, and it needs to become a repeatable pattern. So we're going to go ahead and move it there, and voila, we are done. So you could call this one the coffee bean orange peels because they kind of look like coffee beans a little bit or orange peel sliced whichever you prefer and just to see how this would look let me go ahead and copy everything so control C control F and then slide that over and then let's go ahead and do it a few more times let's actually shimmy this over a little more control C F so this is what it would look like on your long arm machine to repeat the patterns. And then when you do your second rows, control C, F, we're going to drop it down and then rotate it or shift it, offset it, or offset it to either the left or right, whichever you prefer, 50%. And that's what it would look like repeated in an orange peel layout. And that's a pretty cool design. I do like that one, especially so you're not going over, especially since you're not going over and you're like creating that double stitch line because sometimes, and depending on what thread you're using, if you have a lot of overlay on your stitches, it can look thicker than the other side. So sometimes I do like to design patterns that have a minimal of overlay just so everything looks even throughout but that's what this pattern looks like so let me go ahead and delete 
the extras. And once again, in this scenario, you would just go ahead and copy this design, file, open a new tab, doesn't matter what size, and then hit paste it over. And now you can save this design as orange peel, coffee beans, or wh whatever you would like to name it. And then of course you can hit show your rulers, show your grid, and then you can also snap to grid to make it easier for you. And it will snap on the grid and then you can go ahead and resize it to whatever size you would like or you can hit the shift key on your keyboard and keep it all sized equally, whichever. But here's another idea. If you were to make this like an oblong shape, this does look really cool. Just to show you all, let's go ahead and move this up and around. So this is what's neat. You can just still play. Oh, it didn't copy. Hold on. Copy. There it goes. You can still play and manipulate your shapes, which is kind of nice. Always create a copy and save it just in case your computer poops out and things get deleted on accident. But now you can have like a smushy oval orange peel. And you'll, you can create different shapes, whichever you prefer. I think that's really cute. But let's go ahead and go back because we have one more to do. And oh, don't forget, save this. If you like this version, only do one, one single pattern and save it as an Adobe Illustrator file. But once again, let's go ahead and do the last one, which is this curvy inside, which is very similar to this, but we're going to use a new pin tool, a new function, just to give us that organic curvy line. So let me delete this one and let's go to the pin tool and zoom in once again. And I like to start in the middle and we're going to create the shape first. So once again, down across eight, click, hold, drag for eight, direct selection, move this point out of the way, pin tool, connect up to the left, click, hold for eight. There we go. Now let's go ahead and move this out of the way, which we're going to move it, stretch it down here. And in here, we want a nice 45 degree line, but we're going to make a little squiggly. Now you can make a perfect squiggle, but we're going to do an organic squiggle. And on our toolbar, you're going to find the pencil tool. Now, if your pencil tool is not there, it may look like the paintbrush. If you have the paintbrush, right click over it and you'll get all these other options or you can press the N on your keyboard and you'll get the pencil tool. Now you need the pencil tool. Now what you're going to do first is deselect everything then go back to your pencil tool and you're going to draw, you're going to get as close as you can to the point we just ended off of but don't touch it, just get really close. And if you want, you can even zoom in a little bit more if you prefer. And then you're going to freehand and draw your squiggle and kinda end on that point as close as possible. Now you drew your squiggle and this is what makes it organic, that pencil tool is kind of like a normal pencil in real life. You can draw and manipulate it however you want. Now, what we need to do is this point needs to connect with the point we last ended off of. So what we're going to do is hit our direct selection tool, click off of it so our squiggly line is deselected. Now, because we have our snap to grid on and make sure it is on, we are going to click the curve point and with the keys, the arrow keys on our keyboard, you're going to go up one and I recommend going past it just to shimmy it more into place. 
come down, left, right. Now they are directly on top of each other, but they're still two separate pieces. If I click this side, the squiggle line isn't highlighted. So we need to connect those two pieces. And how we are going to do that is hit the direct selection tool, come over off to the side, click with your mouse, highlight and drag over it. And now these two points are selected and right click on your mouse and you're going to scroll down to join. And when I hit join, if I were to click off of it and then click on it again, these two points are now all connected together. But this point down here is not on the gridded line. So we're gonna fix that point next. And to do that, we're gonna go to the direct selection tool click this point and we're going to use the arrows on our keyboard move it down up to the left right just shimmy it a little bit so it's perfectly on the grid line now we're going to go ahead and zoom out and we can take this point and put it back since we're done on this side so let's shimmy that line back over this point down here, I'll just leave it out of the way for now because we're gonna do the other side real quick. And we're gonna hit our pin tool. Actually, we're gonna deselect everything, hit the pin tool. We last left off from our squiggle, so we're gonna click that and we're gonna draw our half orange peel. So we're gonna go across eight, up eight, click hold, for eight and I need to slide it out there we go like so now we're going to want to curve back and end at this point so one our line is not the correct shape so we're going to click that to reset it but we're going to go to the direct selection tool we're going to click this point and we're going to just drag it out of the way for now and then we're going to go ahead and go back to our pin tool Hit this point, come back, go across, down eight, hold for eight, and I need to slide it again. Readjust, okay, so that's eight, let go. And now we want to do the squiggle. So we're gonna go ahead and deselect everything, go back to that pencil tool, and I'm gonna go ahead and go in the middle a little bit. We're gonna get as close as we can to this point we last left off of. And then we're gonna go ahead and draw our squiggly line and get as close as we can to that point where we want to end. Now we need to connect everything. So we're gonna go to the direct selection tool, click off of it, highlight these two points, or actually first we're going to click let me zoom in so you can see. We're gonna click this point right here from our squiggle and we're going to place it back on the direct, on the grid. Now we can see the grid. Sometimes when you zoom in really close, your grid will disappear a little bit. So that's why I zoomed out. And we're going to shimmy it left, right, up, down. So that way they're directly on top of each other. Then with the direct selection tool, we're going to highlight just those two, right click, join, and now they are joined. Now we can put these points all back on the same line. Grab this one, put it back. This point up here needs to land exactly on the same line as the start. So we're just going to click it, shimmy up, left, right, move it around so that way it ends up exactly on the top. And there we have it. So now I can zoom out. And this is what that line looks like. And that's how you create a more organic wavy line in the middle and you kind of freehand and free drew it just like so. Now just to see what that looks like repeated Go ahead and do control C, F, shimmy it over. 
and then let's go ahead and move it over so we can get a double line control C F and then once again if you were to do your second row on your long arm machine once it, you could do that design that looks cool or you can drop it and shift and offset it 50 percent and have it like so that kind of gives me a donut let's you know like a frosted donut it kind of looks like that to me and that's what that would look like and of course if you would want to save this you would save it as its own file and only one repeat so that's how you draw a couple versions of an orange peel now I'm going to show you how to open it in art and stitch so that way you can actually save it as the file format for your long arm machine or if you want to sell it to other people then you can of course sell it to other people in multiple quilt formats so you're going to open up art and stitch and this is what it looks like when you open it you're going to go to file and you're going to scroll down to import artwork you're going to click on that and you're going to go to your folder where you had saved your design and in this scenario we did the orange peel so because my orange peel is a single design because technically this one we did save multiple versions on it so i'm going to go to the orange peel three inch and if i click it you will see a preview here in this little box and if you don't make sure this is checked because if you check it then the preview shows now once you see it and you know that's the one you want you're going to hit open and it will place the, the design here sort of in the middle now here you can see you can kind of adjust it if you didn't and you want to change the size in this program but I highly recommend you know change the size in Adobe Illustrator it's a lot easier to do so but once you have it in this program we need to create a running stitch and in order to do that you're going to select it and highlight it until everything is selected on your design and here on the left side the second toolbar you're gonna hit the top button which says line sew type running stitch and you're going to click it and then it's going to think which normally it doesn't take that long and now it's technically a sew line now we want to make sure everything is correct so we're gonna click off of it and here at the bottom we're gonna hit play always test your designs before you save because this will kind of give you a idea of how it's actually going to stitch on your long arm machine so if it's a little funny here it's going to be funny on your long arm machine so we're going to hit the play button and this is how it goes just like that and it's done pretty simple and it actually came out pretty perfect but let me go ahead and change one scenario for you just in case it happens okay so here I've created a scenario just in case this happens to you if you were to test your design and hit play and you notice the design is technically backwards normally on long arm machines you want to work from left to right not right to left and that design right there if I play it again goes from right to left so it's technically backwards now in this program it is an easy fix what you're going to do is on the toolbar here on the left side you're going to hit reshape and you're going to click on that then you're going to click on your design and it's going to be this bright neon pink color red is your end point green is your stop point now we want those two to flip so in order to do that what you're going to do is whichever you prefer you can click on the green or you can click on the red it doesn't matter but you're going to right click on it and scroll until you hit swap entry and exit points go ahead and click on that 
now the green is here on the left and the red is on the right. So let's go ahead and go back to the top, hit select, click off of it. There we go, and it's perfect. So now we are going to save this as a file for our longer machine, and we're gonna to go to File, Save As, and here is my orange peel file, and we are going to name it This was orange peel three inches. And I recommend you save it as an art and stitch. And then you're gonna go back to file, save as. Now we need to save it in all the quilt formats. So you can hit this button and there's so many quilt formats available. So if it's just for personal use, you can go ahead and save it to what you use, which I use a Bernina. So in my scenario, I would just click Bernina, which equals the .bqm file, and hit save. But if you want to sell this to everybody else, you can do something very easy, which is you come down and hit all quilt formats and you can go ahead and click that and hit save and it's going to save it in every format for long arm machines. Now to show you, I'm going to open up my folder which ended up on the other screen so let me go ahead and drag it down and this is what my folder looks like and as you can see I have the Art and Stitch file, I also have the Adobe Illustrator files, and all of these right here are all of the quilt formats available. So in this case, what I would do is select all, right click, oh, what is it doing? Hold on, my pen tool is being a little funny. So what I would do personally is select all of the quilt files, and then you can put it in a send to a compressed zip folder name it what you want to sell it as and then you can sell the zip folder to other long arm quilters then that way they can have whatever file they need and i like doing that personally but of course that's up to you so once again this is why you need art and stitch because you need to be able to save it as whatever file. Adobe Illustrator cannot do that, but Adobe Illustrator is extremely easy to draw in. So I do hope you've liked this little tutorial of how to create a digital orange peel. This is one of the more advanced or a little bit more complicated pattern if you are a beginner and learning and just learning how to do this. I do have a couple other videos on it that are a lot simpler, which I will have a link for down, down below in the description. But until then, I will see you all next time.